Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profitex Sessions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning REST API development in PHP using JWT. This is our part 13. Inside this video session guys, we are going to define our table structure as well as about class file declaration. Inside our last video means video number 12, we had seen that how can we install about JWT and this is PHP JWT library that we had installed and successfully this project I have imported inside Atom Editor. So firstly, I am going to make a table so that inside that table we are going to register some users and we will see about how JWT token works. So back to browser. Now this is the database. From a starting video, we are using it. Inside this database, we have only one table called TBA underscore students. Now inside this, I am to make one more table something TBL underscore let's say users. And inside this table, we have let's say five columns. Click on go. And here we need to define about the table structure. So the first column, let's say ID, name, let's say email. Let's say password, it should be created at and the default value of created at let's say that this should be timestamp data type and current timestamp it as its current default value. Here it should be varchar and let's say password should be 20 characters of length, email should be varchar and let's say 50 characters in length and name also varchar and let's say 50 characters in length and the default value of id is about data type it should be auto increment so it should be integer auto increment and also we have to select that this id should be a primary key of this table so click on go scroll down and click on save button so successfully as we can see that we have created a table called tb underscore users. Inside this, we have five columns, a primary key, and the current value of created at. It means that when we create the user inside this table via API, then only three fields we have to pass called name, email, and the password. Now inside this database, one more table we have to make to understand about the clearly view of JWT token. So click on database. Now we are going to create one more table, let's say tbl underscore, let's say projects. Inside this, we have let's say six columns. Click on go button and the first column, it should be primary key called id, let's say user id, so user underscore id, project name, project description, so it should be description. Next column, let's say project status, it means that either project is pending, ongoing or let's say completed and finally we need a column called created at. So now we are going to set data type for those. So timestamp, current timestamp as the default value and the status should have a enum type. So we need to select called enum. Inside this enum, we have to set called values. So let's say that firstly about pending let's say ongoing and let's say completed or before that if we set about hold and finally the last value should be something let's say completed so these are the status actually we have declared inside enum type of this status column so click on go successfully we have defined that so description should be text name should be varchar and let's say 50 characters of length and user ID is the integer value and this is the user ID basically we have taken from the tb underscore users table. So go here. Now let's say that these all columns basically contain null value so null, null here, null here and the first column should be auto increment and the primary key. So select all these values and finally click on save button. So why we have created tb underscore projects table? Because via API we are going to see that how can we register users and those users will save inside tb underscore users table. On the behalf of these respective users, we will create some projects via another APIs and we will save inside this table. 
And finally, via another set of APIs using JWT token concept, we will fetch all the data from this TBA underscore users table and TBA underscore projects. So all the necessary two table structure we have defined. Now this time we are going to next define about the class file definition. So back to Atom Editor. Now let's say that inside this classes folder, firstly we need to change about and I think that inside this config the same database we are using called REST API PHP only this time we are using different different tables so close this database.php and inside this classes folder right now we have no file inside this folder so first file I'm going to create let's say users.php and inside this I'm to declare our class so let's say php class let's say users and inside this we have to define our properties first so let's define about properties so define properties of this class and let's say that public we want about if you go to table structure so this time we have two tables and from the same class means users class we have to save all those data inside these two tables so if you click on a structure so we want something name so let's say public name if we copy and paste and the second column we want called email next we want about password so let's say password so all the things of this table has been done now for this table we want about user id so here define about user underscore id next we want about project name so if i write here something let's say project underscore name and next we want about project description so copy that pasting here and final the variable we want something called a status this is all about project status we have so copy and paste so finally we have declared all the public variables which we will access via v1 files now this time we are going to define our connection variables so let's say this should be private let's say connection next private variable something let's say table name so this should be table underscore name so after declaring about the properties next we are going to define about the construct function so let's say public function and let's say construct and inside this construct function firstly I am to pass a DB variable here by the help of this DB we are going to initialize our connection variable so this connection equal to DB and this DB variable we will pass from v1 files so successfully we have initialized this variable with the database connection next we have to define about this let's say table name and the table name for this JWT API tutorial we are going to use called TP underscore users but remember inside this we have two tables so firstly let's say users underscore tbl if i copy and paste the second table we have called projects table so the first table let's say users underscore tbl here we are going to define called tb underscore users table name so if i copy and paste and the second table we have called tb underscore projects so copy the table name and pasting here so inside this class file declaration we have defined a class inside this we have set some public properties and some private properties after that we have defined a construct function inside this construct function we have initialized about these private variables so after defining these basic requirements of this table sorry of this class now we have to make some methods to create our users as well as our projects so inside this video session guys we had seen that how can we define about the table structures to be used in php using jwt as well as class file declarations so rest operations or about the next ongoing methods we will create from the next video so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day